I just got a call from Julio Jones. I'm wondering if, uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, Julio, wait a second. I'll, I'll, I'll ask him. Can Yeah, hang on. Julio, I'm not kidding. Julio, hang on. Frank, um, you know, Matt Ryan, you know, um, <laughs> I'm going to leave it. I don't want, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, maybe, you know, You're Julio, funny. you know. <laughs> you are funny. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's not the ending that I know that my friend, head coach of the Colts, Frank Reich, had. But I'll tell you what, they had a hell of a day today and yesterday. Here is the head football coach of the Indianapolis Colts, our friend Frank Reich. And I got to tell you, man, the high five today that you got for Matt Ryan's kid, man. I mean, dude, you know what what it looked like, Frank, to me? It looked like Matt Ryan, he's really excited about the ability to have like a restart to his career. How did we get here? How did you guys land? On Matt Ryan. No, I think you're right, Dan. I think Matt's Matt's real excited for, for this chance for kind of a, a second stage, uh, you know, a final act to a, what has already been an amazing career. So it's just a lot of credit to him. Believe me, we're, we're equally as excited. Um, you could feel his presence today. You could feel, um, you know, you could just feel that he's a guy, you know, that he's a guy. And I just think it's the right time at the right place, and it's the right fit. I think he fits into our system well, um, and I think he'll bring elements to our offense uh, that will help us uh, take the next step. You, you, you know, Frank, I don't like throwing shade on anybody, and I'm not asking you to, and I'm not going to either, but just walk us back a little bit on the process, you, Chris Ballard, and Jim Mercy, because I look – and how I said it at the end of the year, and, Frank, this is me with my emotion. I said this. You can't lose two games like that at the end of the year. You just can't when you have that kind of talent on that football team. And I know everybody, including yourself, was a little bit disappointed in how that whole thing worked out. Can you take us through the process and the evaluation? Again, no shade on Carson, but how did you come to that decision on moving off of Carson and looking for another opportunity for a guy like Matt Ryan? Yeah, well, first of all, Dan, I lost you for a second there. The internet went crazy for a second. So I'll just try to piece together what I think you said. Um, yeah, I mean, you know you know how I feel about Carson. I, I believe in I still believe in Carson. And um, I think Carson's going to play a lot of good football. I think he's going to be very successful this year. And, and I'm pulling for him. I, I really am. I mean, I love the guy. Um, have a close relationship with him. Um, there's a lot of – it's a very complex – right? It's always a complex situation. There's always a lot of factors that go into it. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, Mr. Ursay, Chris, and myself are always going to do what we think is the best move, you know, the best move for the organization and the team. So, um, you know, it was an odd situation, but I give Carson a lot of credit. First of all, you know, it wasn't all on him. The, the failure that we had at the end of the season was all of us, starting with me as the head coach, our whole team. You know, we just didn't get it done. So Carson is not the scapegoat. But sometimes things happen, and they happen for a reason. You don't always understand it, but you play the hand that you're dealt. You're not afraid of that. You make you make the move that you think is the right move, and and that's what we did. Frank, was it tough for you because of the relationship and the personal relationship? Oh. And I would imagine what you're talking about here is it's got to be a collective group. And when you have a G- GM like Chris Bowden and an owner like Jim Mersey, who has a lot of passion for his football team, that had to be an emotional time for the organization. It wasn't just, let's just get rid of it. It had to be tough for all of you. But yeah, it's, it's very difficult, right? I mean, you get close to these guys, you work with them every day. You're in, you know, uh, you have, you have deep relationships with these guys, but we're all pros. We know there's a business element of this. There's a business element of this. And then, you know, with Carson and I, there's a faith, right? There was always that faith element, that spiritual element. Like, Hey, sometimes things happen in life. It doesn't seem fair. But sometimes it's the right thing. Sometimes you think this is going to be the perfect situation and it ends up not being and you end up having to go somewhere else. And you find out that, man, that was the right thing. That That's what I'm hoping happens here. I'm hoping that this is, the, you know, even though it seemed like the perfect thing for Carson to be reunited back here, um, that no. Right. The perfect thing was let's ho- let's hope for his sake. Right. For our sake is that he steps on to Washington and he plays great and has a lot of success. I'm, I'm so excited to have Matt, right? I'm so excited to have Matt. I've respected this guy. I've never known Matt right before this, but just watching him from afar, 
this guy has elite accuracy. He is uh, an elite leader. Um, you know, he has had cons- he's had a consistency. You look at his numbers year in and year out, how consistent he has been over and over again throughout his career. You know, to bring that to a good team, I'm very excited about it. How about this, Frank, for you? I mean, I, I wonder how you went about this process because last year, too, you you went with a veteran guy, and I asked you if you would think about the process of the draft. I'm looking for it. Is it because you have this roster that's ready to win today, right now, that you needed a veteran, elite guy who knows how to take care of the ball, who knows his progressions? And all this, if it was a different setup where you guys may be rebuilding, maybe you go into the draft, but was it a priority to go after a veteran guy? There's other guys out there, Mayfield, Garoppolo. I'm sure you did all your due diligence on every single one of these guys, but Matt Ryan was the guy you landed on. Was it important to get a veteran guy into the Colts building? Uh, No, we didn't, you know, we didn't go into this thing thinking it has to be a veteran guy because we're built to win right now yeah we do do we feel like we're built to win right now absolutely we do um but as chris and i and mr ursay talked talked it through um you you don't know what cards you're going to be dealt. it's like playing a deck of cards you know you don't know what you're going to be dealt i didn't think matt ryan was going to be available no one thought you know when when we made the move with carson matt ryan wasn't on the radar screen you know uh, and then matt ryan's on the radar screen shoot well you know and 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 we have a chance to draw that card. You, let's and, and and look look how that card fits in the rest of our hand. Oh man, that gives me a straight flush, or that gives me a full half. What you know? I don't know. I'm just trying to use the analogy, and and you see the cards. Um, you know, there's no question, right? You know, Chris. I mean, we always want to draft and go young. I mean, we we want to draft and go young, but you can't say that that's an absolute rule. You got to look at what cards are out on the table and play the hand that you're dealt. Frank, did you guys look at Deshaun? Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about, you know, we've had everybody out. So Deshaun was uh, was an option. You, you probably saw the media that Chris had reached out to them to see, yeah. hey, would, would they? It, it, we hey, Frank, 20 teams probably reached out to exactly. them. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, we so Chris reached out to them just to see, um, would you even consider it? Would you even consider it? And the answer was no. So it was a short process. Yeah, because you know why? I mean, I just read off the AFC quarterbacks here that you guys are going against now. Wilson, Watson, Mahomes, Jackson, Herbert, Carr, Allen, Matt Ryan's now in it, Joe Burrow. I mean, it's going to be tougher, Frank, to win the AFC than the Super Bowl here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, one, one thing, too. The Eagles made a move yesterday for Zach Pascal. Give us a little bit of a scouting report on what you think he can, is going to bring. Obviously, Nick had to have some say in this, and – probably one of his guys too, when he was coaching him, just give us a little insight on him. Oh man, Zach, one of my favorite guys now He's tough, tough as nails, gritty player, really talented, excellent route runner. But, um, you know, with how well Philadelphia runs the football, you know, Zach is just one of those receivers who is a force, you know, he, he's, he's going to do the dirty work. He'll block force and he'll, he'll be the enforcer. He'll, he'll, he'll bring an ad. He brings an attitude. Um, and he, and, but make no mistake about it. He's a talented receiver as well. Yeah, it crushes me in one respect that he's not going to be back here, but I understand this side of the business and he and Nick were super close as well. So definitely a, a move. I'm sure Nick, Nick had a lot to say in that one. Okay. So I want you to talk about your boy here, Nick Sirianni, because uh, nine and eight, he gets his team to the postseason, turns his kid Jalen Hurts into an alternate, you know, pro bowl quarterback. I see you beaming right now. I mean, this goes on the Frank Wright coaching tree here where you must be very proud of what you're seeing with your guy. I mean, I, I, I love Nick. He's like a brother to me. I think he's such a good football coach. Um, and, you know, I, I tell, I'm not ashamed to tell people, I tell people all the time, hey, we worked together for six years. It was a two-way street. You know, I, we taught each other a lot. And we grinded through. We put a lot of hours into develop, be, developing passing games, game plans, play action, RPOs you know, evaluating players, systems, how are we going to make the most out of play? You know, we got a lot of blood, sweat, and tears together. We, I think we see things very similar in the past game and the way we see the game. And so just a, a real a real brotherhood between the two of us. I, I'm really – it's no surprise to me, no surprise whatsoever. He's going to be a great head coach for a long time. 
Last two questions for you. If you don't mind, I mean, I don't know if this goes on the tampering line here a little bit, but just your perspective on what you see with Jalen Hurts and what you think of him as a quarterback. I mean, do you see promise in the kid? Do you see that the guy's got an opportunity at really being – I call all starting quarterbacks, Frank, so you know, elite. But then there's franchise guys. Right. There's certain different guys. And if you got one of the 32 jobs, you're elite to me. Okay, right. so just your thoughts on Jalen a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think Jalen is definitely elite, like you're saying. I think when you know, I interviewed uh, Jalen coming out, and I'm like, this guy's got all the intangibles. He's got all the intangibles. Um, he's a leader. He works at it. Um, the the sessions that we had, like, I really put him to the test mentally um, when, when I interviewed him, and he passed with flying colors in every way mentally. We did this protection thing and man he just bam 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 he just spit it right back to us thought he saw it well in the past game you know he's got a strong arm and I think what they did this year with the slow start they had right and then he's the playmaker but he's got Devontae Adams you know he, he gets a thousand yards receiving with Devontae Adams their first year together so uh, I really like Jalen's game they're in the NFC right so I don't get to see them as much Dan so I can't evaluate you know how he's working through all the progressions that stuff I don't watch all their tapes so but what I've what I've seen has been really good. I just got a call from Julio Jones. I'm wondering if uh, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me, Julio. Wait a second. I'll 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 ask him. Can yeah, hang on, Julio. I'm not kidding, Julio. Hang on, Frank. Um, you know Matt Ryan. You know, um, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. I don't want. You know, I don't know. I just you know maybe you know You're Julio. Funny. You know. You are funny. <laughs> hey, Frank. I love the hell out of you, man. You know that when um. I feel so great about this move for you, man, because I know that you're so close to uh, really being something special in the AFC. And by the way, do you wear your Eagle Super Bowl ring out anywhere? No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of it. Um, I think, you know, those guys, there was a special, special time. But, you know, as a head when you get an opportunity as a head coach, Dan, um, right, it, you put those things behind. Those, those things are behind you, right? It's um, it's, it's about everything that's ahead. There's nothing that's been done, right? We got to do it. You know, we got to come after it each year and, uh, aspiring for greatness. And then in, in your, in your, you know, in your shooting for greatness like that, then hopefully you get it, you get in the tournament and you got a chance. I expect to see you in the AFC championship game this coming season, Frank. I really appreciate it. I love Jim Mercer, by the way, I love your GM, Chris Ballard. You guys got a hell of an operation there. And, um, you're just a great, great person to be running that organization. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you always finding time for me. You know, our friendship is now 40 years old. I know. I know. Isn't that crazy? Whenever I, get, whenever I get a text for you, you know, I mean, it's not very often that you ask me on the show anymore. But, you know, every now and then, <laughs> I, you know, I'm like, okay, I finally I, I made the list. It takes, it's hard to make your list, but I'm, I'm glad I get on there every now and then. Well, I'll make sure I tell Bruce Arians that too, because Bruce was supposed to come on, I think, tomorrow, but he goes, Sills, I'm in Disneyland. I said, drink a lot of water, bro, because you're going to need it walking around that park. Big fella. Thank you. I appreciate it, Frank. Go get him. Thanks, Dan. You got it. That's my friend, Frank Wright, the head football coach of the Colts. Please hit the like button. Do me a favor. Keep it here. We'll be right back here three minutes here on the National Football Show.